Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Tim Evko at Tevco on Twitter, and today we're going to be looking into part two of our two part video series, which is how to hit 60 frames per second with CSS. So, if you remember correctly, in our first video, we debugged this current animation that you see up here, which was just a regular average CSS animation. The problem, of course, was that it wasn't performing well and it wasn't hitting 60 frames per second. As we found out in the first video, that was caused by a bunch of CSS properties that did not animate cheaply, which we found out because of the website CSSTriggers.com. So I'm going to just click play on this animation so you can see it one more time. And we're going to click this, and as you see, it stutters a lot on our, our first click and even second. So this is the animation that we wanted to debug, right? And as you can see, the issue with it is that it's stuttery, it's not hitting 60 frames per second, and that was the problem. So I'm gonna pull up the code, and we're going to take a look at the current uh, code that we have here, and that is that is this for the animation. So um, this line right here is commented out. I was using SAS when I coded it, so in SAS, uh, this double backslash is a is a comment so pay no attention to that but what we have here is the animation um and we discovered again that these animating these properties was slowing down the animation and ensuring that it wouldn't perform uh up to our 60 frames per second standard so this was recoded and i'm going to walk you through line by line what we did and why we did it and how that helped with the animation and, and getting the frame rate back up to 60 frames so the first thing that we did was we added overflow hidden to the body now generally because our css animation this this div is the only thing these divs in the button is the only thing in the animation this overflow hidden probably won't help that much but the principle is this when you're animating something the browser usually thinks that it's going to have to calculate what's going on outside of the container that the thing is being animated in because essentially you could animate the thing in such a way that it ends up going outside of its parent container. This overflow hidden property, again, not incredibly relevant in our current demo because it's just a div and a button inside of the body element, but if it were inside of another element and there were more elements around it, adding overflow hidden to the direct container of the element that's being animated on will let the browser know you don't have to do any calculations outside of this element during the animation. So then the browser says, all right, I'm not going to do those calculations. And hopefully that'll translate to the frame rate increasing because the browser doesn't have to worry about anything other than the animation at this point, right? So the next thing that we did, we added a transform origin top left. Now this doesn't necessarily help the frame rate as it does help our animation to look the same as it did before we refactored it. Because if we're going to be uh, if we're going to be changing these properties down here to transforms, it's it's not going to be what it looks like as if we left it like this. Because when you say go to the left ten thousand pixels or, or sorry one thousand pixels, it's going to animate from the top left just because we're pushing it over. But with a transform the transform origin can be different. And that's what I found when I started to refactor this animation was that the transform origin was different because obviously we weren't using transforms and the element was sort of going to the center of the page and we wanted it to slide along the top, which is what it does in the current uh, non-refactored demo. So this transform origin top left, just make sure that the new animation looks the same. So another thing that we did was we got rid of this transition. Again, not necessarily to help our frame rate, but because we just didn't need it, we weren't really using the transition property. And then we added a margin left of 10 pixels. This was to get rid of this left property over here. You'll see we'll remove that next. And again, not necessarily something with the frame rate. I just didn't, I just didn't feel comfortable using the left position. And that is because if I remember correctly, I think we also get rid of the relative position in here, although I'd have to double check. The next thing that we do is we add this will change property. So this isn't, I don't believe, we could check can I use after this to see um, 
if the will change is supported in all browsers, but I don't think it is. You can do will change or you can add an empty transform translate Z value, which essentially says, and this is very important, push the rendering of this animation from the CPU over to the GPU. And what that does is it allows the browser to do all the calculations on the GPU processor, which gets 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 rid of a bunch of load and memory intensive calculations that are happening on the CPU. When your animation happens entirely on the CPU, especially if it's a very complicated animation, you can you can again that can cause your frame rate to drop because the browser says we have too much work to do to fit it in 60 frames per second, so we need to drop that frame rate. And so this will change property lets the browser know, all right, at, at some point in time, we're going to be doing a an animation and you should get ready for that by pushing all calculations for this animation to the GPU and then the browser knows ahead of time. So this is a very important property when you are doing animations, but there are some caveats to it. It can sometimes change things like Z index and have unexpected side effects on other CSS properties. So definitely be aware of that if you do use will change or transform translate Z. So the next thing that we did in our animation was we got rid of the from property because we're just we're just taking this div and we're telling the browser I want you to end up at a certain position so we can get rid of this from portion of the keyframes. Again, that's not something that helps with um, increasing the frame rate, but it does help with just refactoring your code in general. We then got rid of the left width and height properties and we replaced them with a transform, just one line transform. It looks really nice. That our, our keyframes animation is so much smaller. And what we're doing is we're moving the div over 990 pixels, which equates to 1,000 pixels because we're animating from the top left property. So that will effectively make it look like the div moved over 1,000 pixels, right? And then we're scaling it to 0 0.01, which will make the div end up looking like it's five pixels high and five pixels wide at the end of the animation. And that's it. That's our entire refactored animation. So of course you want to see the final animation and how much smoother it is. And we have that right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click this and pay attention to how much smoother it is. As you see, this doesn't stutter. Basically it doesn't stutter at all. Um, I'm hoping that this comes up nice and clean and clear in the uh, in the video, but if not, we're gonna link out to uh, both of these demos so you can compare them side by side. But again, I'm gonna just pull this one up and as you see, or as I see, it stutters a lot. And uh, this, this new refactored demo doesn't stutter at all. But again, we're gonna drop a link to those so that you can uh, so you can check that out. Anyways, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you've learned a little bit more about CSS and keyframes and hitting 60 frames per second. So thank you for watching.